Let's catch up with Logan in the forests of Canada right when an old enemy and a longtime friend both catch up with him. How many people will die before the issue is done? More than you think. Let's talk about it in our review of Wolverine number one from Marvel Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Wolverine number one. You know, I got to take my hat off to Saladin Ahmed for being one of the few writers in Tom Brevoort's From the Ashes era who understood the assignment. Wolverine number one isn't a perfect comic by any stretch, so don't get your hopes up too high, but it gives you everything you should get out of a Wolverine comic and the promise that interesting things are in the making. At this point, that's about as good as long-suffering Marvel readers are going to expect. Wolverine number one begins with Wolverine, of course, running with a pack of wolves in the snowy Canadian forests. We last saw Logan in X-Men number one, and you decided to take a break from the hero business and humanity in general to get his head together. That's fair enough, and this is where we find him. As a quick aside, this opening scene does make sense, even though it's brief and doesn't really do much to get you excited about the character. He's a feral minded mutant, of course, so joining a pack of wolves makes perfect sense. Sure, Saladin Ahmed's opening scene is a bit on, well, not a bit on the nose, it's very much on the nose, but it suits the mutant properly and it's a good way to start the issue. Now that we have Logan's whereabouts firmly established, we see Cyber, a longtime Wolverine and Nemesis, patrolling the same woods looking for Wolverine. Cyber encounters a security detail responding to a report of a naked man with knives running around, but the security detail decides to aim their guns at Cyber when they see the very large rifle he's carrying. Cyber agrees to drop his weapon and then kills the security detail with his bare hands, but that killing happens off panel. In this major scene, which is the first major scene past the prologue, we see the not perfect parts of this issue, namely the number of coincidental run-ins. Sure, you want as much action as possible in a Wolverine solo comic, but there will be more than one coincidental run-in before the issue is done, and it comes off as mildly to almost extremely lazy. Speaking of coincidences, Nightcrawler arrives in the same part of the woods looking for Wolverine as well. It's not clear how Nightcrawler knew where to find Wolverine or why he chose to disregard Wolverine's wishes to be left alone, but, you know, here we are. Nightcrawler stumbles upon the dead security detail. At coincidentally the same moment, Wolverine shows up. The two greet, hug, and join forces when screaming starts nearby. Just to emphasize the point, yes, coincidences abound. It isn't clear why Ahmed couldn't invent a more organic, believable explanation for Nightcrawler to find and join forces with Wolverine, you know what? but it is what it is, and off the two go running to find out what's going on. Wolverine and Nightcrawler bamf to the sound of the screaming to find a campsite and one dead man who is punched to death. From the sense in the air and the description by the surviving campers, Wolverine figures out Cyber is in the area. Suddenly, Nightcrawler is nicked by a gunshot to the temple, and everyone scrambles to find cover. After a quick patch-up to Nightcrawler's head, Wolverine charges out to find and face Cyber. Up to this point, the pace has been steady. Not up and down, not highs and lows, but just pretty much even. But once Logan and Kirk meet the campers, who don't take kindly to mutants, unfortunately, the pace picks up with a traditional game of cat and mouse. Ahmed steadily elevates the tension as Cyber draws out his prey with dangerous moves and deadly traps. Wolverine races to a clearing led by Cyber Scent and the two fight, Adamantium Claws versus Adamantium Skin. During the fight, the sound of clashing metal quote unquote awakens, and we'll call it that, something ancient and amorphous in a nearby cave. Another coincidence. Wolverine gets the best of Cyber, eventually gouging out his other eye, which is the only natural eye he has left, but he heads back to Kurt to get his friend medical attention instead of finishing off Cyber permanently. The outcome of the big fight, besides the coincidences that kind of pepper in all the way through the issue, is probably the biggest letdown of the of the entire comic. Letting Cyber go feels like a cheat. Ahmed sets up the scenario for Cyber to come back when Wolverine had him dead to rights and didn't need to let him go. As the credits say, Wolverine's the best at what he does, so an extra 10 seconds worth of damage for a lethal outcome wouldn't have changed Kurt's situation. So I call BS shenanigans and nonsense at the end of this scene. The issue concludes with a helping hand from an unexpected and somewhat unwilling source, and a one-eyed cyber stumbling into a problem that could turn out to be a benefit depending on your point of view. Overall, eh, Wolverine number one gives you exactly what you expect, Wolverine being Wolverine. Solid and Ahmed's basic plot gets the job done, technically speaking, even if it relies on too many coincidences to make it happen. And the cliffhanger, to be fair, 
is intriguing. Let's switch gears and talk about the art for a second. Martin Coccolo gets two thumbs up for a comic that's sharp, gritty, energetic, and captures all the right action poses and hard-hitting moments to engage your eyeballs. Layer on some fantastic coloring by Brian Valenza, and you've got one of the best-looking X titles coming out of the From the Ashes era so far, in my opinion, anyway. So, if you want a Wolverine comic, this looks like a tried-and-true, hard-hitting, gritty, manly, testosterone-boosting <laughs> comic, which I suppose is the goal. Looking at the big picture, specifically for the From the Ashes era, Wolverine and his fight with Cyber don't show any signs of what you would call interconnectedness with the other X titles launching in this new phase of history for the X-Men. The last time we saw Nightcrawler, he called in Rogue's uncanny X-Men to visit a young mutant who was dying from some form of cancer. But there's no information as to how Nightcrawler got from there to here or why. So, except for the Nightcrawler bit about him showing up to look for Wolverine for some inexplicable reason, this title is pretty much standalone. So final thoughts. What do we think about Wolverine number one from Marvel Comics? You get everything you want and expect in a Wolverine comic. You have brutal fights, hard-hitting drama, lethal consequences for some folks anyway, and a decent setup for a new threat. Further, Martin Coccolo's art is some of the best of any of the X titles out right now, at least in my opinion. That said, the script relies too heavily on multiple coincidences to make the final fight happen, so Solid and Ahmed's strong moments are hindered by a generally lazy plot. Therefore, Wolverine number one earns a 6.5 out of 10. This isn't a perfect comic by any stretch, but it gives you the basics for a proper Wolverine story, and more importantly, Ahmed avoided leaning on Krakoa for anything more than a brief mention. But what do you think? Is Wolverine your most anticipated title of the From the Ashes era? Leave a thumbs up if it is, and drop a comment below with which Wolverine villain you're expecting to show up next. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. So thank you very much for that. That would be appreciated. Thank you for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one. <laughs>